Hello, my fellow friends. I am Sarah Hovsepian, and I'm constantly on this quest to seek better methods and tools to grow successful projects, teams, and even ourselves, especially in this rapidly evolving COVID-19 era. Whether you're wondering if there's a better way to study for NCARB's ARE exam, stuck on a concept, or just feeling lost with where to begin, that's why I created this channel series. I take hard to explain topics and explain them simply. The intent is to connect these topics to real world architecture and business and engineering, so you can use it to add value in the real world. Stick around, I think you're going to find massive value in this video. If you'd like to follow along with me, then please visit designmakelaunch.com and click on the article titled Overhead Rate. This video is part two of seven in this series, discussing each key financial indicator found in the Architect's Handbook of Professional Practice in depth. As a recommendation, before you continue this video, I highly recommend you watch three other videos on my channel as a prerequisite. I promise it will help you understand the seven part series a whole lot better. Here are the three videos I recommend you watch in the following order. First, watch three types of financial statements to get a big picture overview of the profit loss statement, balance sheet, and cash flow, and understand the subtle differences between them. Next, rewatch the profit and loss statement video, which dives into what a profit and loss statement shows and helps you understand the financial terms that are used to monitor the seven key financial indicators. Remember, all seven key financial indicators are essentially a dashboard showing seven types of metrics a firm uses to assess how it's doing financially. It's critical you understand the profit and loss statement to be able to then plug in the numbers from the profit and loss statement into the seven financial indicator formulas to derive those metrics. Next, rewatch the seven key financial performance indicators video where I dive into each equation and present the formulas to monitor each of those metrics. This video is still pretty high level in my opinion and is meant to introduce all seven key indicators, the definition, formula, and target range, sort of like an introduction. And if you have already watched all three videos and you're here, then fantastic. You're in the right place. Every individual has expenses to pay for, from food and gas to rent and mortgage. Similar to an individual, a business has expenses too. If you work in an architecture, engineering, or construction firm, chances are your firm has a long list of expenses from rent and equipment to insurance and even paying you. This is where the concept of overhead comes into play. First, we will discuss the definition of overhead. Next, present a diagram to visualize the concept then we'll see the formula written out. Next, we will examine how this topic may show up on an exam or in the real world. And finally, we'll do a practice problem together. Are you ready? Let's dive in. Overhead rate is defined as indirect expenses to total direct labor. Again, that's indirect expenses to total direct labor. This concept is on page 417 in the background or key financial performance indicators in the Architect's Handbook of Professional Practice, 15th edition. Here you'll find a sample of all seven key indicators in the table. That's really useful. Now let's dissect the definition of overhead and visualize it for you visual learners out there. With something to write with, redraw the following diagram. If you understand this diagram, then all seven financial indicators will be easy. This stacked diagram is basically a profit loss statement divided into various sections. Section one includes all reimbursable and non reimbursable expenses, along with consultant fees. Section two is the direct category, direct labor and direct expenses. Section three is the indirect category, indirect labor and indirect expenses. 
And section four is profit. I've drawn this so many times personally in so many different ways that it's now very easy for me to remember, and I recommend you do the same. Before we dive in further into the profit and loss statement, you must understand the different categories of expenses. In general, there are two expense categories that a firm will pay for, direct expenses and indirect expenses. Let's begin with direct expenses. Direct expenses are those expenses that are specific to a project, a service performed, or a product delivered. For example, drawing a floor plan for a current contracted client is a direct expense. Indirect expenses, the next category, are those expenses that are not specific to a project, a service performed, or a product delivered. Automobile liability insurance, rent, utility, are all essential, but these expenses are not directly related to a billable, contracted project. Indirect expenses are considered general and administrative, or G&A expenses, and it is precisely this category of expenses that is also called overhead. Overhead rate can be calculated by using financial terms straight out of the profit and loss statement. First, we take total indirect expenses, indirect labor plus indirect expenses, which are all the expenses a firm spends on overhead. That's the green box labeled IE, indirect expense in the numerator. Then we divide total indirect expenses by the total direct labor in the yellow box. This is assumed to be total direct labor or the entire dollar amount a firm spends on employees billed to a project. Now let's see the formula written out. Overhead rate is derived by taking total indirect expenses divided by total direct labor. That's dollar over dollar. So the final answer will be a unitless number, a factor. Look at a profit and loss statement the next time you're able to for your own firm and see if you can add up all the overhead in that column. The size of a firm is usually correlated to how much overhead the business has. In general, every business will try to keep overhead as low as possible, so there's more left over for profit. Now let's think about some ways overhead rate can surface on the ARE 5.0 exam or in the real world. The following is not comprehensive, but a thought exercise. If you know how to solve for these scenarios, then you can solve any type of overhead word problem. Here's one scenario where you're given indirect expenses and total direct labor, and you're asked to find the overhead rate. For example, if total indirect expenses are $150,000 for a firm and the combined total direct labor of personnel working on projects is $100,000, then $150,000 divided by $100,000 equals 1.5. For every dollar spent on paying employees working on projects, another $1.50 is paid towards overhead. Think of overhead as being additive. If $1 goes to the employee, another $1.50 is accrued in overhead. If $2 goes to the employee, another $3 is accrued in overhead, and so on. Here's another way that overhead rate can show up in a word problem. Given an overhead rate and an employee hourly salary, find the overhead generated by that employee. For example, if the overhead rate is 1.5 and the employee hourly salary is $35 an hour, then the total overhead the firm generates for that employee per hour is 1.5 multiplied by $35 an hour equals $52.50 of overhead per hour. It's that simple. The next scenario is given a list of expenses and a profit loss statement and a list of employee types and their salaries, find the overhead rate. This requires that you understand what expenses are considered overhead and add those expenses together. Then figure out which employees are working on projects, 
and add it all together to get the firm's total direct labor. Finally, just plug in the numbers into the overhead rate formula to get the overhead rate for the firm. And the final scenario is given a profit and loss statement, select line items in the overhead category that a firm can reduce in order to reduce the overall overhead costs. Again, if you can identify what is overhead from a list of expenses, then likely overhead that have a high dollar amount can be singled out and identified for reduction or elimination altogether. If a firm, however, decides to downsize during an economic downturn, then the firm may not need as many HR employees, for example. HR employees are considered indirect labor. Their time is not related to a billable project. And consequently, their time is straight out of the firm's operating expenses. Are you ready to do a practice problem together? Let's consider the following ultra simplified profit loss statement. And here's the practice question. Given the following profit and loss statement from the current pay period, find the firm's overhead rate and round to the nearest hundredth. And part B, if the firm principals plan to reduce the rate to 1.5, adjust the profit loss dollar amounts to achieve a 1.5 rate. Okay, so we have four sections from the profit and loss statement, and we're already familiar with what each of these different sections mean and we're also given a dollar amount for each of the sections. And the ones in parentheses, of course, are negative. The first thing we should do is identify what the problem is asking us to find. It's asking us to calculate the current overhead rate for part A of this question. We know what the overhead rate formula is, so we can write the overhead rate formula, which is total indirect expenses divided by total direct labor. Then we can plug in the numbers from the profit and loss statement. That's $29,000 in indirect labor and $107,000 in indirect expenses in the numerator, divided by $62,000 in the denominator for the direct labor. That ratio yields 2.19. This is way over the 1.3 to 1.5 range which makes sense because part B asks us to reduce the overhead rate so that it comes out to 1.5. Now the next step to solve for adjusting that overhead rate to 1.5 means that we must adjust any of the following terms in the overhead rate formula. To simplify, let's just keep the direct labor the same, $62,000. Multiply the total direct labor of $62,000 by 1.5, which equals $93,000. This tells us that we need to keep the total indirect expenses no more than $93,000. Let's reduce indirect expenses. If we know the total indirect expenses should be $93,000, then $93,000 minus indirect labor of $29,000 equals $64,000 for indirect expenses. Let's check the math. $64,000 in indirect expenses plus $29,000 in indirect labor divided by $62,000 of direct labor equals 1.5 and that is correct. So by reducing the indirect expenses and keeping indirect labor the same, we were able to get the overhead rate to the range required in the practice problem. The question remains, however, how does your employer break even? And what does break even mean? The concepts of overhead and break even are close cousins. We will examine break even in the next article and video, part three of seven financial indicators. If you found value in this article, then please don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel and hit the bell for the latest notifications as videos are posted. See you in the next video.